Live from Ravensbourne College, the heart of Greenwich, set in the big capital. We bring you our host, Mitchell and Barbara, showing off some of the finest art from some of the most talented artists around. This is the Morning After Show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Morning After Show, and I am your host, Mitchell. And I'm Barbara, and we'll be with you for the next 19 minutes of your tragically miserable life. Today is a really interesting day. I, Mitchell, will teach you how to make possibly impossible art. We'll also be discussing how the digital age affected art and society, and Mitch's favourite segment... Star Wars! Darth Vader is going to be a guest on the show. This isn't Attack on Art, this is Splunk. Now if you've never seen or heard about Splunk, then your eyes and ears are in for a shock. This is where we make art, in, impossible art, possible. You, you, and you at home can even do this. How amazing is that? For today, we'll make original aeroplanes, origami aeroplanes. This is how we make paper planes, get rid of that. How amazing is that? Ah! I have another tutorial for you guys. Gather up fallen leaves from outside your house or even in the park. Assemble them like so. Now we let it dry. Here's one I made earlier. Amazing, right? Even you can do it at home, easily, hassle-free. Then, we used a wire from a pair of headphone, earphones to assemble it like so. And it will turn out like this. Or like this. Or like these. Or this and this. for the inconvenience. We're currently experiencing technical difficulties, but for now, let's look at an interview that we prepared about digital art and how it affects society today. VT, take it away. Hello. Hello. Has technology changed art for better or for worse? For worse, because with the old Polaroid cameras, they're quite expensive for the film. So you had to actually make sure you, what you were shooting was what you actually wanted to. With digital, you just click, 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 and you can take pictures of anything. Definitely for better. I mean, it's given people more tools in order to express themselves. Like, look at uh, a 3D printer. The ability to make prototypes has just became a lot quicker, and it's, it's pushed people's creativity further than it ever was before. Art before, I think, was like perceived as art. It's like you got to go into a gallery and stare at painting or whatever, but now we can like, access things like YouTube and whatever, and art is class of different things, like video making, photography, etc., which I think technology just helps with in general. I think it's changed it for better because it is helping people express their artistic talents okay. in the best way possible. Do you prefer traditional art or digital art? It's digital. Okay. Because yeah. like, it's I like them equally. I, I don't think it's fair. I mean, traditional art has its place, absolutely, and so does digital. Digital art. Yeah. It just, like, for me personally, because I'm interested in like, photography and film, etc., it like, hits me more, you know, than going to like, an art gallery and staring at a painting. Do you think it's cheating to use technology for your work? How is that cheating? <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Wait, no, no. No. 
No, I just think it's a different form of art. I think, yes, historically art has been about painting and drawing and you know, different like, techniques using like natural materials. But I think the growth of technology is just kind of like broadened art in general. No, if you've got the technology, why not use it? It's like saying, is it cheating to... No, not at all. Okay. Nah. Thank you. Thank you. I apologise for my actions earlier, but don't mind that. I'm pleased to announce that we will have very special guests coming onto our show. These guests are the elites of the elite, and we'll be meeting them after the break, so don't go anywhere. Mother giving you bullshit. Are you tired of receiving bullshit? We're here with the all Neil bullshit bang, with one spray and the bullshit's gone. <laughs> See that one t-shirt that always gives you bullshit about your homework? Bang and the bullshit's gone. <laughs> Struggling with that one bullshit test paper that determines the rest of your life? Give it one spray, six hours later and the bullshit's gone. <laughs> Had enough of your bullshit life? One spray and bang you're in Hawaii. Available now for online purchase at a rate of $5.99. Bang and the bullshit's gone. Get it now! Terms and conditions apply. Please use responsibly. We are not accountable for any injuries or death. You'll be the coolest father around if you buy this phone. What about a solid gold C3PO watch for a price that's out of this world? How about a bottle of solace and whiskey? A great gift for a mature fan. Our best friend will be the finest looking coach around with this wooky collar. This nano will supply enough nutrients for the Ewok village. All of this for the total price of $3.29.99. Buy now. Terms and conditions may apply. Are you tired of being tired? Well, no longer with Splurge! Splurge will give you an incredible energy all day and night long. Energize, energize, energize! You won't ever have to sleep again. Once you start, you won't ever want to stop. It's so good. <laughs> For the small price of $9.99, you can get yourself a can of splurge today. Welcome to our Star Wars segment, where we'll either promote or destroy this kind of view. Thus, let's enjoy this short trailer from the new Star Wars film. I have lived long enough to see the same eyes in different people. I see your eyes. I know your eyes. Follow me. The Force Awakens. That was one mind-blowing trailer, wasn't it? <laughs> totally. And here with us now, a very important guest, Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader. Welcome to the show, morning after show. I am a big fan. I have been ever since I was a young child. And now you're actually sitting in front of me. Um, is it, could I trouble you for an autograph? <coughs> <if I'd... coughs> Anyway, we welcome you to the show. So, how have you guys been today? Besides having this dead old man here, I'm actually pretty excited. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you and Vader do seem to get along, don't you? So, how do you guys feel about the new Star Wars film? Watch it, I'm pissed off that they had to kill me off. If you haven't seen the movie, watch it now. What can I say? It's going to be absolutely mind-blowing. Obviously, because I'm in it. It's known to many of our die-hard fans including myself, that all the other Star Wars films were filmed here in the UK. How do you feel about the seventh being filmed here? Uh, it certainly feels like being home. Yes, as da Darth Vader has mentioned, it certainly feels like coming back home. Awesome crew, a complex storyline about my journeys. It certainly made me feel nostalgic to have my adventures filmed in the same locations as the other six films. What would you say makes this film different from the rest? Well, the use of props this time instead of CGI certainly made a better effect, I think. And finally, out of the directors, Abrams and Lucas, who was better to work with? Well, I've only been in episode three in the original trilogy. Wait, hang on a second. Wait, who's Abrams? <laughs> 
We thank both of our special guests for giving us their insight regarding the new Star Wars film. After this short ad break, we'll be discussing Disney and cinema. We'll also be showcasing artists' work around the campus. We will be back shortly. May the force be with you. Let's talk about a more controversial issue that will surely warm up your cold evening. Did you know that in 2009 and 2012, Walt Disney conglomerate purchased some of the biggest corporations, such as Marvel and Lucasfilms, for the sum of $4 billion? Surely you wouldn't think, then surely you would think that this is, wouldn't change the, uh, about the films being produced. That's where you're wrong. We've prepared a Disney-themed box pop to see how many people are actually aware of the issue. Has Disney gone too far into buying such big corporations to join their conglomerate? Have they come to the dark side because we have cookies? Hi guys, this is Ravens Born On, and today we're discussing Disney, Star Wars and cinema with a few students around the campus. Oh boy! Okay, here we have... Them. Naeem, Tyler. Bella. Danny. Alona. How many times a year do you go to the cinema? Um, ten. Um, it depends uh, if there's any interesting movies. Seven? Um, um, probably about three times. Yeah. About ten times. Roughly that. Fifteen. Will we be watching the upcoming Star Wars release? Maybe. Possibly. No, I don't think so. Most definitely. Of course I will. Have you seen any of the previous films? Only when I was small. Yeah. No, I, I never watched Star Wars before. <laughs> yes, I do. Do you have one that sticks out in particular that you like? No. Don't know. The original trilogy, um, episode five. Maybe, I don't remember the oh, name. <laughs> uh, Attack of the Clones. As you may know, Disney recently purchased Lucas films, Star Wars' production company. Disney also did the same to Pixar and Marvel. What's your opinion on the monopolization of the entertainment industry by Disney? Are you in support or are you against it? No, I don't, I don't support that idea. So you think that the smallest production company should stand alone and not be bought out by Disney? Yeah. For Star Wars, it's a good look, like, they're able to reinvent it and bring it back bigger and stuff. Well, I guess if the film is going to be successful, I don't see there's a problem with it. Well, I think if you've got the money to do whatever you want, just use it. Yeah, unless you're Donald Trump. Are you in support? No. Why not? Because it's stupid. No, I just think they're trying to make more money out of Star Wars. I'm in support. <laughs> okay, right. So I think it's good because they can funnel a, lot of, funnel a lot of money into big productions so Star Wars can actually be remade. However, um, Monopolising the media is bad because there are so many smaller companies that don't get noticed and they don't get the funding. There's people like us students that lose out. That entire part of the show sure is controversial, wasn't it? Having a very special guest and having to sit on our couch took me to heaven. Now, shall we take you to heaven again? The lovely and creative students of Ravensbourne prepared us with some awesome masterpieces. Truthfully, these works can even be compared to Da Vinci and Michelangelo.
actually, Netizen sent us some tweets about the, these beautifully presented works of the creative minds. One from Darth Maul is life. I really like the colourful one. Well, I'm not sure what one that is, but I have to agree. <laughs> at Aishi, wonderful work. One from at Art Lover 35. That work is so cool. I wish I went to Ravensbourne. I can see why. At Patty on Hankins, I'm really feeling this work, aren't we all? Oh, this one's short and sweet. At Monet Forever, they say really inspired. Now that we're on the topic of Twitter and we're surrounded with Christmas spirit today, our audience sent us some funny and some extremely miserable stories on Twitter about the ghosts of Christmas presents. At Sarah Loves Life 92, one of my relatives is known for giving horrible gifts. For my 16th birthday, I got a plain fleece blanket. The type that rolls up for travel, clearly I wasn't thrilled, so I tried to return it. Customer service told me the blanket had been sold in stores for three years. Hashtag FML. Ooh. At Red Boots, someone gave me a pair of used red suede cowboy boots and they came with the authentic dust. Oh, sounds like a gift from the attic. Slightly creepy bedtime Barbie at Christmas Van. Christmas 93, it was the season for this popular gift. If you dab Barbie's eyes with water, they would magically open and close. And that year, I received four of them from various friends and relatives. I'd take my chance with Annabelle. This one's from at Jenny from the Block. I know my best friend meant well when she gave me an electric bug vacuum because she knows how much I hate insects. You trap a bug in one end of a tube, then press the trigger on press the trigger to suck the bug into wherever part collected the dead bodies. The whole idea grossed me out so much that I never even opened the box. Ah. Wouldn't you sell it on eBay? Maybe. Yeah. Relatives give me used stuff all the time. And I, I understand. Just sell it on eBay. They do nothing about my bugs. I'm infested, no one cares. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> well, ladies and gents, now that you've invested and wasted a lot of time on our show, a few more minutes wouldn't hurt. Darth Vader is about to make an announcement that will definitely make you feel a lot of emotion for the viewers at home. Look, look son, I know you've had some problems in the past and I haven't been the best father, but I think I can change. No, I know I can change. And I'm aware that I can't fully make it up to you, especially during the times when we're at each other's enemies but I'm willing to put aside the differences and be the best father I can be. Dad, I, I'm never gonna give you up. I'm never gonna let you down. I'm never gonna run around and desert you. We're no strangers to love. Cheers. 